Welcome back. We're trying to get some headway here with Graydon, but we're not getting the clues that we need, the information that we need to pursue, the line of logic that we want to pursue, with the music box and the discs. We basically need a second disc from somewhere. But I do want to carry on pursuing Graydon here a little bit before I go off with the other two on the right of um, Gregson there. But so, we did the second one, and we did the third one. So let's go on to the first one. Hold it! So, is this newspaper headline accurate? Government communications are being intercepted? How could I possibly know? What do you mean by that? Any important government communications are handled by high-level officers, by specialists. General members of staff in the station where I work would never be entrusted with sensitive information. Oh no, stop! I must say something, stop. Let me guess. Juror number five. Regular communication station officers aren't as lowly as you're being led to believe. A team of us are responsible for setting up and testing the telegraphs used by the Ministry. And Mr. Graydon is the team leader. That's... fascinating. Graydon is highly skilled operator. Stop. Currently in presence of idol. Stop. Oh my. Hmm. So you have access to the equipment used for these confidential communications, Mr. Graydon. Oh. What of it? Transmissions are always made behind closed doors, so they can't be heard. In any case, all messages are sent in cipher. I wanted to say encrypted, but it threw me off. Normal employees couldn't possibly understand them. Oh no, stop. Must say something. Stop. Mr. Graydon regularly attends meetings with Ministry Technicians and the Ministry Communications team. He assists them in ensuring that there are no errors in important internal communications. So maybe the Morse code on the discs is actually the cipher. And he's received the top prize at the Cipher Kraken Convention five years in a row now. That's fascinating. Graydon is highly skilled operator. Stop. Currently in presence of idol. Stop. Well, your idol would appreciate it if you'd keep your mouth shut. She should really pick her idols more carefully. I, I tell you, this lawyer's accusations are completely unfounded. Okay, so now we're back here. I expected more from that. Okay, so let's switch over to these two. Look, all we've done is break into the gaff the other night. Like, this is what, 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 what he told us to do. Hold it! You what? Like Mr. Graydon told you to do, you mean? That's it, yeah. Who else, eh? Silly me, thought he was just popping over for a natter of them all the years. But then the ro- uh, wait, what? Wait, what? Silly me thought- Like, that's not me misunderstanding what they're saying, it's just like, hold on a minute. That's new information. Silly me thought he was just popping over for a natter. That a word. A conversation. After all these years. But the rotter had a d dodgy job for us. That's new information. Hey, Ash? Let me stop you there, Mr. Skulkin. After all them years, you say? Do you mean to tell me that Mr. Graydon is an acquaintance of yours? Well, the search book kind of bad is, you know? Sure, let's say Graydon's an old China. Excuse me! Is something wrong, Mr. Skulkin? Eh? No. The other Mr. Skulkin. What? Who? Me? Yes, you. When your brother was testifying just now, he said something that seemed to cause you to react. Oh, I was just remembering the old days, that's all. The old days. We used to have a right old laugh together way back when. Together? Mr. Graydon, you mean? Yeah, with Ash, I mean. Okay. I mean... I mean you look at him now, his fancy whistling flute, and you wouldn't have an Adam and Eve it. But when we was younger, he was from the poor part of town, just like us. Is that so? But he was always a leery one. He had the brains, he had the savvy. Always coming up with smart ideas, like... What would never have gone through our heads. 
Oh, blimey. Ain't that the truth? Remember Milverton and Skulkin's milk run? That was a corker, eh? Save it until after the trial. Your reminiscing has no place in this courtroom. And neither does your fruit. Oi! The keys asked us a question, didn't he? And he was answering. Yeah, we ain't done nothing wrong. Nevertheless, the court is not prepared to accompany you on your trip down memory lane. Counsel, can we turn our attention back to the testimony, please? I don't know. Could that sentimental story be relevant somehow? Add it to the testimony. My lord. Yes, counsel? The brother's last sentimental statement could hold vital information relating to this case. Very well, counsel. I'll permit the brothers to supplement the testimony with the detail. Briefly, I hasten to add. Say no more, Skulkin's never Skulkin. Okay. Milverton and Skulkin's milk run. Go oh, then there were the days. Right, so let's Holy pursue that. I'm sure I'm going to regret asking, but what exactly was that? Some kind of business? Just a little scheme we had going back when we was youngsters. Bit of fun, really. Living fresh milk to the locals, that's what it was all about. That sounds alarmingly legitimate. It must be a catch. I suppose since we're here, should I ask them to elaborate? What on what? Ooh. What we got, what we got? Milverton Skulk's milk run. Those were the days, I'm sure I'm going to regret asking, but what exactly was that? Some kind of business, just a little scheme we had going back. Whereas youngsters, a bit of fun really, delivering fresh milk to locals. That's what it was all about. Okay, so if it's legitimate, we don't really need to know the business model, but the name. The name. Milverton. Milverton, Milverton, Milverton. Let's see here. We've got Ashley Graydon, haven't we? Not got anything. Because wasn't it? Where can we get? Uh, mm. I'm sure there's something somewhere. Because wasn't his name Milverton? Which implies a lot of stuff. Sure, his name was Milverton. I'm sure, there's a Milverton come up somewhere, but it's like I need. They are Mason Milverton, male, brickmaker. Bryce fired Mason Milverton. It's his son. Ashley Graydon has another name, doesn't he? Business name. So this business was just a bit of fun, you say? And it was just yourselves and Mr. Graydon involved? Yeah, that's it. Milverton and Skulkin's milk run, was it? Yeah, that's it. And where did the Milverton part come from? Alright. I thought clever clubs like you would have worked that one out. I did. That is... Enough of this. How much longer were you expected to listen to this drivel? Objection. Let me guess, you don't accept anything these two witnesses are saying? Tell me, why is it that it was only at the mention of the name Milverton that you decided to interject? B because I, uh, well... Uh... It weren't the happiest at homes that one came from. Yeah, this old man was struggling for money so much his wife walked out on him. She took the name Graydon then, you see. But Ash will always be Milverton to us. Milverton. That used to be your surname, did it? Of course not. This is all bunkum. I've been a Graydon since I was born. Do you really think you can rely on the testimony of these two thieves? Hmm? You're a communications officer attached to the civil service. 
As such, your personal details will have been thoroughly checked at the time of your appointment. It would be a very simple matter indeed to subpoena those records, Mr. Graydon. Do I? Well, it would appear that Mr. and Mr. Skulkin's testimony has been reliable for once. You are born Ashley Milverton, then? Is that correct? Very well. Yes. So Ashley Graydon was once Ashley Milverton. That information could change things. It could turn out to be extremely important. Yes, it bloody could. I mean, come on. Ashley Graydon's personal file... Pro file? Yes. Profile has been updated in the court record. All of a sudden, we seem to be up to our necks in a serious matter of national security. Although all this talk about interception of secret government messages is still just conjecture at this stage. It would explain a number of things, though, wouldn't it? The negotiation Ginny overheard on the omnibus two months ago, and the break-in at Windybanks. But the trouble is, it wasn't Mr. Graydon in the omnibus with Mr. McGilded. No. It was Mr. Mason, the brickmaker, who was so horribly murdered. Mother. Hmm. If only there was some link between the two men somehow. Yes. If only there was some link. What? I know, but Mr. Graydon's testimony seems to be as watertight as ever. Like, come on. What if the key is to us making headway with the cross-examination here? Could be those two brothers. It is! We already made the headway. We're there! Wait, wait. So where can I go with this? Because we didn't do any more with you, did we? So we did that. We haven't pressed on you. Like, like, if we'd known there was dodgy government secrets involved, we wouldn't have touched it. Hold it! So, did you know nothing about this music box? You didn't know nothing. Still don't know nothing. I ain't planning on knowing nothing about it either. But two nights ago, you did indeed break into Windybank's pawn brokery, didn't you? In your original testimony, you said that the door to the shop was ajar, that it was some kind of sign begging you to go in. But the truth is, you were planning to break into Windybank's all along, weren't you? We were, God, we were. You're right there. Because that's what he told us to do. It was his plan. Yes, all the dots. Why was it Mr. Grader's plan to break into Windybanks that night? Did you not ask the reason? Well, um, he, um... He said the place was full of stuff worth nicking. That's what he told us before, and anyway. And now it was a load of cobblers. And in it... I weren't best pleased, I can tell you. In any case, if they know the real reason. It doesn't sound like they're going to give it away. Okay, so clearly we're meant to present something somewhere. Hmm. What and where? I mean, the only thing I've got right now is that, because it's, it's the Milverton. But where can I present that? If it is that, because that's the only place I can think of where we've got Milverton. Unless, 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 unless. Hold it! Oh, I didn't want to do that. Oh, all right. So, how did your little business work exactly? Well, every morning down our way, the milk and would come with his cart to deliver milk. See, if he stuck your empties outside your front door, he would leave them full again, right? So, we swooped in on the action. Got people to sign up with us. Pubs to deliver milk for half the price, the other geezers doing it. People couldn't wait to sign on the dotted line. We were raking it in, we were. So, did you live on a dairy farm or something? Gordon Bennett, we off your rock and we had nothing. We were too poor to have a farm. Right. Nah, what we had going was simple. Once you had the idea, we'd just switch them over, see? Our customers' empties with the full ones from anyone who wasn't on our books. A doddle, right? 
Oh dear. I think you meant to say a diddle. And that's crime. It's just an harmless bit of fun, that's all. Milking the general public in such a fashion is most certainly not harmless, as you put it. Well, it was him what came up with the idea. Ash is the evil genius. You mean Mr. Graydon? So Ashley Graydon was once Ashley Milverton. That information could change things. It could turn out to be extremely important. Yes, but where, where, where can we present stuff? All of a sudden, we seem to be up to... Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's get back around to it. Okay, so... What can we present? What can we present here? It's this sort of thing like... Hmm... The only, the only thing we've got here that would be with the Milverton thing is that. Hmm... Hmm... So Mayor Communications Officer couldn't possibly steal confidential governmental information. Besides, the sound produced by the music box aren't even Morse code. With some low-class brickmaker negotiating when we got it anyway, was it not? I have no relation to the man. Objection! Mr. Ashley Milverton. Tell me, why don't you try to hold your former name from the court? Because I haven't gone by that name for years. It means nothing to me. No. I don't think that's the real explanation at all. The truth is, we had a reason to hide that name. Explain yourself, please, Counsel. I have here the notes from the omnibus case, my lord. And as we all know, the victim, the man who we now understand to have been negotiating with McGilded. Yes, Mr. Mason, the brickmaker. That's right. Only Mason wasn't his surname at all. It was his given name. His full name was Mason Milverton. Mil... Milverton? Do, do you mean to say, Saints Alive? Mr. Ashley Milverton. Is it not the case that the brickmaker, Mr. Mason Milverton, was your father? Gah, oh, I... I don't. As I believe I mentioned earlier, your family history will have been thoroughly checked when you joined the civil service. And it really would take no time at all for the court to subpoena those records. Ugh. The truth is you have been illegally acquiring highly confidential governmental information and sending it on to McGillard in collaboration with your father. Ugh. Hell of a spin. The new facts and evidence unveiled by the cross-examination of this witness all come together to reveal the truth. The, the truth, you say? That you collaborated with your father, Mr. Mason Milverton, in illegal dealings with Magnus McKilvitt. By dint of this music box, you mean, Counsel? Yes, stealing information being sent in secret government communications and sending it on to McGilded. Mr. Graydon concocted this elaborate scheme of using two music box discs to encode the information. As presumably a safety measure against the information falling into the wrong hands. And a very effective one. I shouldn't have given the scheme any credence whatsoever. But the deal with McGilded went sour, and the brickmaker met his end. Yes, but before he was arrested, McGilded managed to temporarily dispose of the stolen disc at the pawnbrokery. Then, having learned of the situation, he appeared at Windybanks two days ago. In an attempt to recover the two articles McGilded had placed in pawn there. But that attempt failed. The disc was seized by the police, and the other, you never found. So that same night, you enlisted the help of the Skulking Brothers and broke into the pawnbrokery. This time, determined to recover the second disc. Uh, 
Are you suggesting that the second disc was inside the music box? Eh? You never knew nothing but that. On the night that Mr. Windybank was killed, the intruder of the pawnbroker touched one item, and one item alone, the music box. As rather ingeniously demonstrated using the two prints from the security camera, indeed. So, the question that naturally begs answering is this. Why was only that one article disturbed? The answer is obvious, because it contained the second disc, which the intruder was desperate to retrieve. Since, if it were to fall into the hands of the police, it would be proof of high treason. Well, Mr. Graydon, do you deny that all of this actually began on that fateful night two months ago? I, I... I refuse to accept any of this nonsense. Sir? There appears to be blood seeping through the sleeve of your jacket. What? Ah! Two nights ago, we know that three shots were fired at the scene of the crime in Windybank's pawnbroker. One took the life of the pawnbroker himself. One struck the pouch around Mr. Shlomes' waist. And the final bullet... struck the calendar on the wall of the shop, having first pierced the arm of one of the intruders. Mr. Graydon, that wound on your arm that you seem to be trying to hide, it's a bullet wound, isn't it? He's got you now, me old China. Time to call it quits and croak, I reckon. <laughs> Don't acknowledge my presence there, under any circumstances whatsoever. Th Those were my terms, remember? And I paid you handsomely to comply. Clearly I was a fool to think I could trust some common back slum thieves. Fine. I admit it. I was there in Windybanks that night. I paid this pair ten guineas to accompany me. And as you noticed, I sustained an injury in the course of my adventures. Oh yeah, it's quite a... It's, it's bleeding. But that is all. I admit to nothing more. Stealing government secrets, negotiating with Mr. McGilded. Won't do that if you bleed me. As God is my witness, I'm sure I recall nothing of the sort. It's not going to go down without a fight. Not until I can show hard evidence, I suppose. Nevertheless, the defense has now established a crucial fact. Which is... Well, we know that one bullet was fired from each of the two firearms we have in evidence. The bullet from the Skulking Brothers' gun hit the pouch around Mr. Shlomes' waist. And the bullet from Mr. Windybank's gun clearly must have been the one that caught Mr. Graydon on the arm. Indeed, it must. We can rule out the possibility that the man shot himself. And that leads us to only one conclusion. Mr. Windybank was shot by a third gun. Which can only have been fired by the third intruder. Goodness. That's right. Mr. Graydon. The only person who could possibly have shot Mr. Windybank that night is you. Start. You made a grave mistake when you summoned me here. What? What's that supposed to mean? Yes. As you rightly say, I was there at the pawnbrokers. I did my best to hide the fact, naturally. 
I had no intention of ruining the distinguished career I had built for myself at the communications station. But did the thought never cross your mind? Did you never consider the possibility? What? What do you mean? What thought? What possibility? The possibility that if I was there at the scene, I may have witnessed the crucial moment. You see, this makes me a key witness in this case. I have my hands firmly around the neck of your client. What? Are, are you suggesting... I saw it all. I saw the very moment that pickpocket girl pointed the gun at that poor, defenseless pawnbroker and shot him. You... What? I mean, you can't trust him at this point. Why would you ever trust him at this point after everything that's been going on? Oh, da, oh, da, oh, da. Well, it would seem we are finally entering the last act of this theatrical trial. Mr. Graydon. Yes. I trust you are fully aware of the implications here. It is shown that your claim is false. You will have incriminated yourself as the killer. Oh, I understand fully. Then I must ask you to give your formal testimony once more. You will explain to the court precisely what you saw at the moment the defendant allegedly shot the victim. Nothing would give me greater pleasure. Uh -huh. Witness testimony, all right. The moment of the shooting. All right, so we need to find a hole in this. While these ruffians were jostling with the broker, we are still near the entrance to the shop. All right. When Windbank threw Nash over the counter. The counter. The counter. Counter. I felt a sharp pain in my arm. I pursued the man, but he shut himself in the storeroom. I can see him through the peephole in the door, though. It's going to be the peephole. This is going to be the key here. The accused, in a black coat, shot the man in the back as he was trying to flee to safety. I saw the blood spatter all over that wretched girl. Then she tossed the gun out of the peephole, so I picked it up and made my escape. Hmm... That doesn't fit the facts. Good gracious, this, this is quite extraordinary testimony. It's like... Then she tossed the gun out of the peephole. She had it in her hand. There's, there's our contradiction. You claim, sir, under oath, to have clearly seen the defendant pulling the trigger. She had the gun. Oh, da, oh, da, oh, da. It wasn't my intention to testify in this way. But neither is it my intention to be found guilty of a murder I didn't commit. So you see, my hand has been forced. I tell the truth now as an act of self-preservation. The truth. Until now, the prosecution was completely unaware of these details. Yes, well, um, sorry about that. Having shot me in the arm, the pawnbroker was then shot in the back by the accused. And as I said, she was showered in his blood. You say the blood spattered over the accused coat. Are you sure on that point? Yeah, because we've already examined the coat, so... Oh yes, quite sure. All over the black overcoat that pickpocket girl was wearing at the time. Really? If her coat could somehow be shown to harbor vestiges of blood, that'd be conclusive evidence here. No, 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 it wouldn't, trust me. Then it proves something else. Such an investigation is entirely possible, my lord. What? Only very recently, a German scientist developed a technique to identify human blood. 
So here's to true science, not some amateurish detective's dubious foray into the world of chemistry. I think dubious about Hurley's work. His ideas are all sound. Ideas are no use to us here. In science, as in law, theories must be proven before they stand. In Germany, the technique has already been employed in the courtroom as the basis of evidence. Scotland Yard has a small quantity of the chemical reagent used. With your lordship's permission, we could shatter all vestiges of doubt within minutes. Hmm. This doesn't look good, Runo. Why not? Oh, we know, don't we? There's blood all over the front of Ginny's coat. They test it with their chemicals. Oh, help, you're all right. I was forgetting what happened yesterday. Don't move, Ginny. I'm gonna shoot. That's not Mr. Windybank's blood. That stain is from two months ago. That's Mr. Mason's blood. My name was stabbed by McGilded. He was wearing the coat at the time. My lord, the defense objects to the test proposed by the prosecution. Overruled. Lord Van Zykes, make it so at once. With pleasure, my lord. And while we await the results, the defence may proceed with their cross-examination. Once they find that blood on the overcoat, Gina will be... Counsel? Yes, my lord. The cross-examination. Of course, my lord. This cross-examination doesn't go well. I don't manage to uncover some decisive evidence or a really compelling clue now. A very bad feeling about the outcome of this trial. Cross-examination. Right, so I think very much at the moment of the shooting. We'll end this part here, but I'm thinking the only thing I really want to go with at this point... ...is very much that little point at the end. It's got that little extra detail that's just sort of like... Hold on a minute, mate. And then she tossed the gun out of the peephole. So I picked it up and made my escape. So where is the gun now from your point of view? And why does she have the gun? There's, there's a hole there, which we'll find out about in the next part, maybe. Ta-da for now.